Before the Clintons left their governorship in Arkansas, more than a hundred people had been suspiciously murdered. Hundreds more died during their first terms, and the scourge continues to this day. DNC staffer after DNC staffer that speaks out against election fraud or leaks information to WikiLeaks ends up gunned down. And the Clinton crime family and their backers is now in the spotlight. If I die, if they kill me, it was done for a worthy cause. Somebody's got to stand up against these people. Long before George W. Bush had taken office, or Senator Obama was even thinking about being president, I was there, exposing the crimes of the Clintons. So it is fitting that I, Alex Jones, called the dark heart by Hillary Clinton, would be your chronicler. A chronicler who risk his very life exposing these evil ones. It's required by Bill Clinton in 1992, and it was instituted here in Texas in 1993. I know the code, sir. Are you going to institute his urine and blood testing when he commands you? Are you going to stick a needle in my arm when I have no criminal record? It's also what happens when you listen to the radio host, Alex Jones, who claims that 9-11 and the Oklahoma City bombings were inside jobs. Just a few days ago, Hillary Clinton, one of the most powerful criminal kingpins in history, came out on national television and said that I had a horrible dark heart. I don't know what happens in somebody's mind or how dark their heart must be. I am committed to standing up against oppression and tyranny. That's just who I am. But I've got to be honest with you. I thought back to the history of the Clintons' reign of criminal terror in the last 20 plus years on this planet. And I have to tell you, it's surreal to realize that Alex Jones, little old me, is one of the main opposition points against these monsters. It's also what happens when you listen to the radio host, Alex Jones, who claims that 9-11 and the Oklahoma City bombings were inside jobs. Hillary Clinton is famous for her death threats, both public and private. Back in 2008, even the New York Times had the headline, Clinton's remark on Kennedy's killing stirs uproar. When Obama was way ahead of her in the primary polls, she said it doesn't matter because Bobby got assassinated before the primary ended. Now, my husband did not wrap up the nomination in 1992 until he won the California primary um, somewhere in the middle of June, June, right? We all remember Bobby Kennedy was assassinated in June in California. This is the type of bloodthirsty rhetoric that we continually see from Hillary Clinton. Years later, after she had successfully conned the world into bombing Libya to give Al-Qaeda air cover, Hillary, after landing in Tripoli, bragged that she came, she saw, and Gaddafi died. Yes, we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, oh, I'm sure it did. <laughs> I want to go back to the beginning. Governor Bill Clinton and his co-governor wife supported George Herbert Walker Bush in the 1991 war in Iraq. But from there, it only got worse. Once they were in the White House, they expanded the bombing to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of attacks a year on the infrastructure of Iraq. They got the UN to pass the most draconian sanctions ever in modern history where medicine and food and all forms of technology were basically blocked from coming into the country. Over a million and a half Iraqis starved to death and died. And Hillary Clinton's mentor, Madeleine Albright, bragged on 60 Minutes and other channels that 500,000 dead Iraqi children were a good price to pay of the sanctions. We have heard that a half a million children have died. I mean, that's more children than died when, when, in, in Hiroshima. And, and, 
you know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. The population implodes. Refugees flee across the world. A once pro-Western secular Muslim nation had begun its path to being taken over by jihadis, which Hillary, a decade plus later, would facilitate in happening. I mean, let's remember here, the people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. Let's go back again to 1995 and 1999. You have the Croats, you have the Serbs, you have the Muslims in the South, in Albania, you have the Balkans. The Russians have pulled out after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991. The Clintons back Islamicist out of Albania and Croats, this is on record, to attack Serbia. When Serbia fights back, even though they lost twice as many people, the Clintons launch giant bombing raids and NATO invasions that blow up power plants, water treatment plants, TV stations with depleted uranium bombs radiating the entire area. Then they had British television broadcast images of what's admitted now to be fake Serb concentration camps. The Clintons are the most hated couple in Serbia and the Balkans because the Serbs were the most powerful allies of America. And Madeleine Albright, the Secretary of State who ran this whole operation that bragged about 500,000 kids is no big deal. Her father and her were saved from the Nazis by the Serbs. A lot of you younger women don't think you have to, it's been done, it's not done. And you have to help. Hillary Clinton will always be there for you. And just remember, there's a special place in hell for women who don't help each other. But when you are a Machiavellian sociopath or a sadistic psychopath, like George Soros, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton and others, you don't look at things about alliances and who's right and who's wrong. You look at a billion plus Muslims and you look at Syria and you look at the invasion points where you can come into all of Europe and take over. But first you've got to get the weapons to invade. And you see Libya and Muammar Gaddafi, who for eight years previous to the Western attack had invested in the West, brought the West in and decided to go the route of detente. He was set up, jihadists out of Saudi Arabia, via the State Department and Hillary, this is all mainstream news now, were brought into Benghazi. They attacked the country. The West had a bombing campaign to back the takeover. Islamists were put in control. Christians, blacks, non-radical Muslims, Shiites and others were killed by the tens of thousands. And Hillary formed, by design, a failed state. We came... We saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> you look at the before and after images, it is simply incredible. And Hillary admits it's a failed state. They took the weapons, the Stinger missiles, the tow missiles, and moved them to Syria to knock down the gates to Europe. You take over Syria, you can bring in all the jihadis out of Saudi Arabia and other areas, invade Europe, then use the Islamic threat to ban free speech of those that criticize it and use the civil emergency to bring in a permanent form of martial law. To be fair to Hillary Clinton, she's only a puppet of George Soros, who even the Jerusalem Post has recently reported, due to the WikiLeaks documents, is nothing but a megalomaniac who thinks he's the Messiah, establishing world government through chaos he sows. First on Ukraine, one of the things that many people recognized about you was that you, during the revolutions of 1989, funded a lot of dissident activity, civil society groups in Eastern Europe, in Poland, the Czech Republic. Are you doing similar things in Ukraine? Well, I set up a foundation in Ukraine before Ukraine became independent of uh, Russia. Um, and the foundation has been uh, functioning ever since. And it played a, an important part in events now. Do you? It would take hours to chronicle the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people 
that have been mysteriously murdered, gunned down, choked to death, drowned, cut into pieces since the Clintons were running for governor right through president, right through the State Department to today. But just since Bernie Sanders openly had the nomination stolen from him a few months ago, we've seen at least four top staffers over email, over servers, over all the key information being gunned down, being killed, being murdered. And WikiLeaks has come out and said, we don't reveal sources, but this is an alleged source, and we have put on a $20,000 reward. This is getting really, really out of control. The stuff that you're sitting on, is, is an October surprise in there? We Do you even know what you're sitting on? WikiLeaks never sits on material. Uh, our whistleblowers go to significant efforts to get us material and often very significant risks. As a 27-year-old who uh, works for the DNC, who was shot in the back, murdered uh, just two weeks ago uh, for un unknown reasons as he was walking down the street in Washington. So that was, that was just a robbery, I believe, wasn't it? No, it's, there's no finding. So uh, that's what are you the suggesting? Sort of, what are you suggesting? What, I'm suggesting that our sources uh, take risks and they, are, they become concerned uh, to see things occurring uh, like that. But was he one uh, of your sources then? I mean... We don't comment on who our sources but are. Why but why make the suggestion about a young guy being shot in the streets of Washington? Because uh, we have to understand uh, how high the stakes are. Google has been caught, so have Facebook, Twitter, you name it, censoring anti-news stories about the Clintons, including the Clinton death count. We are seeing what the technocracy is able to do. We are seeing them openly engage in mass censorship. What difference at this point does it make? In closing, I want to reach out to you with a personal appeal, a free human to other free humans of every race, color, and creed who have the spirit of liberty beating in your breast. I don't want to confront a kingpin that's killed millions of people around the world and who thinks it's funny. I don't want to take on this vampire. I don't want to fight this monster as an individual. But as a man, my spirit directs me, commands me to take action. I don't have any other choice. And I want to be victorious and successful in this quest. Evil historically takes over and is unstoppable as long as good men and women do nothing. But as Thomas Jefferson famously said, our third president, when we take action, nothing on earth can stop us. That's why tyrants are so scared of good men and women who actually have goodwill and want you to have free will, and who want universal law to reign on this planet. We're facing cancer. That's what Hillary Clinton represents, evil. She represents chaos. She represents lawlessness. She represents disease and failure. Her physical manifestation is a rotting, reanimated corpse. I'm not scared of Hillary Clinton but I am scared of failing in this mission. So I ask you all to redouble your efforts to expose the new world order. And I ask you all for your prayers. And I reach out to Hillary Clinton as well, because I don't even personally hate her. I hate the spirit that has taken over her body, her mind, and her soul. There's still time for you to turn back, Hillary. You talk about my dark heart and then Miss represent what I've said. I have a heart of incredible love. I care deeply for people, and I even care for what's left of you. You wouldn't have said the things you said on that podium unless there wasn't some shred of humanity left in you. There's still time for you and others to turn back. But I want to be very, very clear. I have chosen the path I'm on, and I am willfully challenging you and everything that you represent. And I'm asking the population of this planet and those that love liberty to support us and to pray for us. 
And I'm telling you and your masters that I'm only one symbol of freedom, one manifestation, and that nothing on earth will stop the movement that you now see. It's time for Hillary Clinton to repent. It's time for Hillary Clinton to stop the murder, to stop the killing, to stop licking her lips like Madeleine Albright and herself when they talk about all the dead kids. I look at how you put in jihadis and al-Qaeda into Libya and into Syria to kill hundreds of thousands of Christians, and Obama won't let the Christians get out, but lets the Sunnis that engage in the crime escape. And I just thank God I'm not on your team. So whatever you do to me, that's between you and God. But I've made my choice, and I am not with you. I will never commit suicide, and if I am killed, the criminals that represent Hillary Rodham Clinton are the main suspects. You may have the old rotten, discredited mainstream media that the AP says has a 6% trust rate with the public backing you, Hillary. But I've got common sense and the will of the people behind me. And I'm committed to a cause. And in history, and in this universe, nothing on earth can stand up against that. No matter what happens to this body, ideas and movements backed by truth and liberty are invincible. They are bulletproof. This is the heart of 1776. Introducing a new t-shirt, which I think folks need to get, uh, telling the real truth about Bill Clinton, who is a serial rapist and a user of women. In another case, it's about groping and fondling and touching against a woman's will. And rape. And rape. Bill rapes them physically, and then Hillary rapes them psychologically. He's a rapist. Absolutely. He's a public figure and goes straight to hell. Get your Bill Clinton rape shirt today at InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-800-253-3139.